I'm Teemu Niukkanen, director of Are You Hungry? Yes. And I'm Antti Toivonen, writer of uh, Are You Hungry? Look back at the character set in, funny, uh, in Fucking Bunnies and Are You Hungry? You dive into like behavioralism and uh, you play with societal norms and preconceived notions. Is, is that part of your, 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 your vocabulary, that your, your tapestry that you like, to, you like to poke people and see what happens when, when essentially we're all the same? <laughs> yeah, I think oh, like, okay, yeah, uh, yeah, so we, we like to do something like uh, psychological comedies. So, uh, so if you think of, uh, of those films, like uh, a lot of it actually happens inside the head of the, the lead character. So in that sense, yes, but I would say like uh, if you're to say anything about our tapestry, it's more like a demo style of uh, comedy, yeah. which actually has less to do with the, with the characters, but more like the environment. It's almost like, uh, uh, to me, like demo is like a master of lame. So I know like uh, whenever, whatever sort of uh, stories we write, mm -hmm. uh, he's just going to make it like uh, this like amazing clash of like uh, the ordinary and absurd. So I think like that, would be more like a, if, if there's like a, any sort of a style that uh, would be recognized. I think it, it's going to be more more that not so much actually the characters that we mm -hmm. do. It's putting people in situations where they they might feel uneasy, but finally it's it's all up there, right? It's all. Uh... Yeah, it's a good starting point for a, for a comedy that there's this really really um, clear problem that we that the main characters have to solve. And then uh, we just like I think like we we do only comedy, so like it's it's really like in our in our souls, <laughs> yeah. so to speak. So we 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 see like we see fun in everything. We see fun in prejudice, and we see fun in xenophobia, because because at the end of the day, it's it it is really fun uh -huh. how, how you like. How you're afraid of this strange, where where where, where there's the unfamiliar, actually, yeah, the un unfamiliar, where where there's not exactly anything unfamiliar. It's just like it's in your head, not, yeah, yeah, yeah. not in the uh, target, so to speak. Yeah, so yeah, that's uh, that is that's true. And just to go back to your like a previous question, like a lot of our comedies actually, it is like just <laughs> in the heads of the people, and then like, uh, but the. And I think like uh, if there's a pattern, there's like things that the, these uh, lead characters that they can't express or they don't want to express, mm -hmm. but that kind of drives their behavior. And then when you put them, and it's, it's not wrong to say like uh, well, the comparison you just said, because we've been discussing it ourselves as well, actually without thinking that the, uh, uh, it, it can be seen like in many other like uh, filmmakers work as well, but the, it is really about the, the setting because we want our comedy is kind of like we want everything to be kind of very normal, and I think that's like uh, the the style of it. Everything has to be very normal, but there's just some big glitch in that like uh, reality, and you just you just literally drop the character there and see like what happens. Is it? Would you say it's almost like a finished thing? Like it is easier to avoid <laughs> topics, yeah, a topic, yeah, than really like go into them. But I'm sure that they, they, they both both of our films have traveled a lot, yeah. and they like had good response like all over the world. So, thus I, I'd say that that it's not only a Finnish. I think thing. people can uh, yeah. relate to a lot of the thriller esque yeah. elements that you put in there and I the, think, the sight yeah, gags. I and think the people who talk a lot like it's a way of hiding things as well, like mm -hmm. like Finnish people basically they remain silent and avoid. But maybe like talkative people like don't stick to the point either. I don't know. This <laughs> yeah, and also like I, I would say like and it's more like an aesthetic thing. And I think that was like a, a big inspiration for our work. Like even before we got into like a, more like cinematic storytelling. But yeah. uh, you know, growing up in Finland, uh, 
especially when you're so familiar with it, you see so much like uh, you said the place is a little bit shit, you know. And you know, <laughs> there's a lot of like really lame things around you. Look at like wow, well, like makeshift things and it's and really mediocre. Like. It's really mediocre. Everything is so mediocre, and uh, and I think it's almost like uh, our work is some kind of like a celebration of that mediocrity. So uh, that's how we want like uh, if we have like a like a sex orgy. It's not like uh, any like sort of like that. There's everything is like really amazing. They have like their sofas from IKEA, you know. Like and then uh, you have like uh, your ironing IKEA board, outlet. IKEA outlet, and then the same thing. You look at like, uh, are you hungry? Like, uh, yeah, everything is just so ordinary. And I think that's the way how we. It's almost like an accentuated ordinaryism. <laughs> is that even a word? I like the soundtrack intervals that you that you where you ins you insert very specific moments in both films, like like you, you you'll blast like with with the uh, with fucking bunnies is like it was like the the the, the metal aspect, mm. but here is sort of like a a, a pimped out uh, space aged uh, disco or something like that. Um, um, how do you think about um, um, the soundtrack when you're when you're creating these worlds? Is it something that's that's developed at the onset, or is it something that's sort of like how can we like sprinkle some dust there, or how does that work? Uh, well, after I read the script, uh, it's quite like obvious how I want to use music, or like uh, for example, in, in Fucking Bunnies, I wanted to like. Um, Exaggerate the contradiction between really mundane yeah. environment and really like over the top, like black metal. Yeah, like this really, really plain view, and then we like play this really, really hardcore, satanic black yeah. <laughs> black metal. Like Gorgoroth's yeah. implicit Satan was the soundtrack. I <laughs> so remember. like, because <laughs> I want to like, um, like push the comedy. In terms of music as well. Yeah. Whereas in in, in, in Are You Hungry, I, I think the, the my original thought was to uh, use like this um, happy hardcore stuff, like really cheap, yeah, uh, like techno from from the nineties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we tried it out, but it, it didn't play out that well. So um, I searched for for a, a bit more sophisticated. Um, Electronic music, yeah, trancey, and, like yeah, and it's the same same thing that because because mom character in Are You Hungry, she's so so like n normal and mundane even mm -hmm. that when you just like put that kind of a like chic electronic music on top of her, like when when she's going through her life problems, then it's suddenly the problems become funny. <laughs> yeah, and it's interesting, like, uh, in the writing phase, uh, especially now thinking about Are You Hungry? Uh, I... The, this sort of decisions, again, like, uh, to me, it was a complete surprise about how the music track is going to be, like, because uh, uh, that's something that we don't think about at all, like, at that stage, so it was only when I saw the first cut, I was like, oh, you went with techno. <laughs> it's like, it works. Uh, mm -hmm. I yeah. love the both of your characters i love the mother character um who is this actress um has she done previous stuff i like tell me t tell me about casting her and and perhaps uh, all the gymnastics she goes through just with her facial expressions how how, how did that come about uh her name is birio longa and she's quite established okay. actress in film okay and she's done Quite many like these like, uh, pretty like painful comedy roles. Okay. So I. Uh, so it's we, time we to like save her. Yeah, we didn't even have an audition for her, or any other. So we ju I just like picked her, and she wanted to to come and act. Mm -hmm. um, it was really really interesting. F follow follow her doing her job because I I wasn't like I was wearing a. Um, That's it. Earphones, and okay. I, I'd hear like every how, how she would prep herself before takes and stuff like that. It's, it was like she really like went deep 
before, for example, like the scenes where she had to cry or be a bit like yeah, neuro- uh, in a rush to, to save her kids. And yeah, like meltdown she'd, mode. She'd be there like, and then cry. <laughs> so it was like she's really, really talented. Yeah, yeah. I just yeah, I just go yeah. <laughs> Super talented. Yeah. Whereas um, about the, the role of Tommy, yeah, the, the the song, we had only like four applications, and out of which only one had an audition. Okay. And it was Matvey, the, the son who <laughs> got the part. Uh, surprised that he was only one who auditioned. So um, luckily he was like exactly how I had imagined Tommy's character to be. Yeah. So um, he comes with a lot of uh, I, I want to call it uh, visual confetti, if you want to call it that. I don't know. Like yeah. the, the character is very much he assumes who he is, and he's very he's very okay with it. And yeah, yeah. But I'm not sure. I'm, I'm sure if this like okay to say, but I, I'm not sure how much. Uh, Matvey actually acted. <laughs> he's like in person. He's exactly like that oh. as you see on screen. Yeah, different yeah. hair and different outfit, but yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. His persona is like that, and I kind of experienced same sort of a relationship with him as the mom character in the film, because I tried to give him directions and talk to him, and I, I didn't. You tried to feed him too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> from catering, <laughs> but but, but um, I, I almost got zero response. <laughs> so it, it's it was quite interesting. Typical sixteen-year-old. Um, what are you guys? Are you working on a feature next, or? Yes, we are. Yes. What, what's uh, are you? Where are your curiosities lies uh, in terms of perhaps uh, themes or or characters without going into the. The, to the DNA of the actual project, uh. I think really like the f- our future things will be like concerning like family, family. How, how you how you see your own family and mm-hmm. how you, what's the importance of your family. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I, I would say yeah, family and this again like this sort of like t- psychological comedies where there's something inside the mind of the lead character that the, nobody else knows and they can't or don't want to express it. Mm-hmm. That's something that, the, and then when you just start thinking about like uh, what kind of things like that can exist and then start going from there. So we, we do have uh, a feature uh, in development already. So we have, we have the storyline and uh, we have like uh, the, the main characters figured out. Great. And, uh, it will, in a way, like uh, bring elements actually from both fucking bunnies and uh, 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 are you hungry? And kind of like, uh, yeah, it, it, once it's done, uh, I'm sure like uh, people can see like they came like almost like from two roots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, those two films. It's uh, the, the, yeah, the like the, the born yeah, child. Continuing but, yeah. the, the theme of like avoiding and lack of talking <laughs> and like yeah yeah cool and escape even yeah yeah and of course I like, go always good to have a bit of a like a cult kind of an element mm-hmm yeah <laughs> well I got a new appreciation of uh, of uh, a badminton and uh, not badminton but racquetball with you guys and uh, and the s and uh, scene whatever it looks like uh, uh, you, gave it, you gave it a fresh coat of paint with your previous work, and uh, of course here, uh, um, I, I appreciated uh, very much the uh, the visual structure of comedy and like what you think might happen with a with a when a mom goes to the extreme ends and and uh, and um, what you think she thinks she think she saw and what you know is not the case. Uh, I, I like uh, I like that wrestling match between the audience and. And the characters, so I, I hope to, to to see that again. Yeah, and I think like uh, what well you just mentioned about the the, the S and M and that sort of things, and I think that's just like uh, the reason why we do go to that sort of themes. It's not that actually the 
because when people do say like S and M in cinema in particular, yeah, it's, it's, a like a, it's, it's a shock value yeah. and it's like a, it's a, because of a certain like extreme element of it. But I think to us, and I think it's just like really like demo style as well. Like we imagine it more like a, like like as your neighbor, like a, who you who you've known for like ten years, them as like an S and M couple. It's anything but glamorous. Yeah. It's like, you know, like their, their bodies are not perfect and unsexy you know, and sexy like, yeah. and like uh, and they are probably like uh, even going through the motions of that they've read read some instructions <laughs> from somewhere how to do it rather than actually feeling it. And I think it's that sort of things like uh, uh, that that just like uh, create like just like beautiful comedy. Well, it's very much appreciated. Thank you very much for your time. And congratulations on both shorts. Thanks. Thank you. Kitos. Hey, this is Eric from MyOnCinema.com. If you want to support us, subscribe below. For more reviews, interviews, film festival coverage from Sundance, Cannes, Toronto, you want to check out these guys on this side.